more impressive last night? Was it Caitlin Clark or Paige Beckers? Well, it's pretty incredible about what each young woman was able to do in their games yesterday because certainly UConn does not advance past the second round without Paige Beckers not only scoring her 32 points, she accounted for 65% of UConn scoring. And like she has done all season long, she did it in a really uh, efficient manner. And of course, when you look at Caitlin Clark, there's no way Iowa advances out of the second round without her. It's so incredible when you you know, appreciate these two women when they were both freshmen the question was which is the best freshman in the country and then that year Paige Beckers was the player of the year and then we've over the course of the last two years Paige Beckers has dealt with injuries we've seen Caitlin Clark emerge as sort of an otherworldly force on the offensive end of the floor so certainly they are the most important pieces for each of their teams both capable of leading their teams to a final four and I'm sure Lisa Bluter thinks she has the best player in the country just like Gino Oriyama says he does well today uh, uh rebecca tuesday edition is the teeth edition that's why you and i are on today because we both have have a nice set have a nice set of teeth so tuesday is the, is the teeth edition for espn i love two it <laughs> right white <Two> let's go <laughs> two things can be true rebecca and i want to piggyback what you said I believe Paige Beckers had the better game last night. I believe Caitlin Clark had the better season this season. Although Caitlin Clark is not greatly, uh, is not terribly efficient. Sometimes you look at the stats and she's 12 or 30, and we just look at the 35 points or the 40 points she scored when it took her 35 shots to get that. But Caitlin Clark was the better player this year. She's been the better player this year, although Paige Beckers had the better game last night. And to also echo what you said, neither team is going to advance had their superstar not stepped up and had superstar numbers last night. And that's okay. I get it, Gino. You're right. Hype your, hype your young lady up. She's incredibly talented. Paige Becker, she was an All-American her freshman season. She was player of the year. Okay, Caitlin Clark said, you know what, Paige? You got me. But over the last three years, and you're right, uh, uh, Paige Beckers has de dealt with injuries, but Caitlin Clark, what she's done over the last two years, mm -hmm. I don't care nothing about no analytics. I don't care nothing about stats. I see better than I hear. I hear what you're saying, Gino, but I know what I've seen over the last two years from Caitlin Clark. Rebecca, in some ways, I feel like it's hard to compare them, right? Because obviously with Caitlin Clark, what people point out when people, the argument is, is she the GOAT? She's doing more with less in terms of the talent around her. Obviously, Paige Beckers, we talked about it um, before we started the show, five major injuries to UConn, also doing more with less right now and stepping up. But Shannon, to your point, we haven't really seen Paige for two seasons, Right? right, she missed two yeah. seasons, so it's really hard to compare the two of them. And hey, who's the greatest? Because she hasn't she hasn't played as much. You're absolutely right, and plus, she's just getting her legs back. You keep having these debilitating injuries, and she has to build those those leg muscles back up again. Get her feel about it. like you know what this body is able to do what it normally did. These legs are able to carry me, and I can do things like I once could. Caitlin Clark has not had to knock on wood, has not had to deal with the injuries that Paige Beckers had. And so for her to come back and play at the level in which she's playing at to become an All-American again after dealing with two ACL injuries, yeah, I think that's kudos. I think we should commend her for the way that she's played. But I do believe Caitlin Clark had the better season, although Paige Beckers had the better game last night. Yeah. But what are the chances that we're headed for an LSU versus Iowa Elite Eight matchup? Well, we're, we're one sweet 16 away from getting there. And that, that was the shocking thing when the brackets were first released was the assumption was that you would not have a potential for uh, – LSU and um, and Iowa to oh. meet until a Final Four, but we could have it. Uh, it's going to be a tough road, though, for both of those teams because Iowa is playing a very good Colorado team, and it's interesting to note these two teams met in the Sweet 16 a season ago. It was a one-point game at the half, and Iowa ended up beating them by 10 points, but Colorado in that game, 21 offensive rebounds. They made things difficult for Iowa, and they're a little bit of a similar team defensively to what we saw from West Virginia yesterday, the team that gave Iowa so much difficulty. And on the other side, for LSU, they are the three seed, and before they would get to that Elite Eight matchup, they will have to go through UCLA. UCLA is a team that has all the pieces to win a national championship. In particular, their best player is inside. 6'7", Lauren Betts. They have a complement of experience 
experienced guards around her. They can shoot threes. They can, uh, you know, score out in transition. They can defend as well. So uh, we may be on a collision course for, for that matchup that I think a lot of people would like to see, but certainly tune in for their Sweet 16 games because they will not be easy, easy for either of those teams. Yeah, uh, Rebecca, you have to look at, when I look at Iowa, I don't know if they can keep winning these games in which they don't get to what they normally score in the regular season. They led D1 women's basketball in scoring about 93 points a game. They scored less than 70. They're going to need to get up and down. They're going to need to get into a free-flowing game because it's a lot more difficult because Caitlin Clark is so heavily involved in their offense. It's so hard for them to get easy buckets in the uh, uh, half-court set. So they're going to need to get more up and down. Paige Beckers, 60 points, 25 rebounds, and 10 assists through her first two uh, uh, games in the tournament. She's playing lights out. They're playing really well. But in order for, especially Iowa, in order for them to get to the national championship game, guys, I'm going to believe that Caitlin Clark is going to have to do what Cheryl Swoops did for that Texas Tech team. And we know, she, I think she scored 47 points in the championship game, but she was outstanding throughout the tournament. I think she averaged over 30. And she single-handedly, because I cannot name another uh, female, on the, uh, a young lady that was on that team, Caitlin Clark and Paige Beckers, because Beckers' uh, next best player had gone out, which she tore an ACL, even though Paige didn't do... Uh, didn't have the game type of game in the first. The, uh, uh, her, uh, Paige Beckers, I believe, has more mm -hmm. help than Caitlin Clark. To make a long story short, I believe she has more help than Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Um, let me ask and Shannon, one of the things that's really interesting w with Iowa is this is a team that not only led the nation in scoring, but led the nation in three-pointers made per game. They averaged mm -hmm. 11 made threes per game. Yesterday, Caitlin Clark made five of their threes. It was the only five threes they made. Only one other time this season was Caitlin Clark the only one who was able to hit from deep, and that was a loss for Iowa to Kansas State. They had a game right. just a couple of weeks ago at the end of the regular season where Iowa made 22 threes in that game. She certainly needs to lead the way, but needs all of the shooters around her yes. to continue to be able to hit from deep, which they couldn't do yesterday. But a team that's capable of making 22 threes is certainly capable of making it to a national mm -hmm. championship. Absolutely. And this is only their fourth win, a fourth in, uh, in 12 games in which they've scored that few points and won the ball game. Yeah. How impressive is Juju? What type of talent is she? Uh, you know, we hear the phrase generational talent, and she certainly is one of those. Um, Juju is is a force to be reckoned with, and USC is a force to be reckoned with. I was fortunate to go out and, and call the Pac-12 championship game. And from the Pac-12 tournament on, this team has been outstanding. And all year long, Juju has been doing her thing. And second in the nation in scoring, averaging 27 per game. One of the things that makes her so lethal is you simply cannot stop her. And, and she's a different offensive force than Caitlin Clark. She's not taking the logo threes, but she is coming down using her handle. She can get to any spot on the floor. She's unbelievable drawing contact and getting to the free throw line, but she has really good, talented players around her. Lindsey Gottlieb brought in three graduate transfers, all from different Ivy League schools. At times this season, she's called them Juju and the Nerds or Juju and the Ivies. And those young women have assumed their roles perfectly. They've let Juju be the star, let her be the focus of this team. But a player in particular to keep an eye on is one of those grad student transfers. And the one from Harvard, that's Mackenzie Forbes. She has been shooting lights yes. out. Yes. When Juju struggled in the Pac-12 championship game, her only game all season where she was held to signal digits, uh, Mackenzie Forbes was a force. And she was named the Pac-12 tournament most, most outstanding performer. So, yes, Juju is leading the... I think dealing with a little bit of a technical difficulty there with Rebecca. Rebecca, yes, but, Rebecca thank you so much. Uh, Shannon, yeah, you jump in. Yeah, but we look at Juju and all the Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, they're great off the bounce. They're just not it. Can they take the ball? Can get all the way to the rim. They have great outside shots. They can shoot the three ball. And that's what makes these young ladies so unique is that all three are great off the bounce. Juju has been sensational as a freshman, and she's only going to get better because now she has a taste and knows what it takes to get to and to get to that spot. She can get to any spot on the court, get her shot off, and then when you hug up on her, she can get by you and get to the rim. It's been fun, and that's what's that's why. I believe the women's tournament is doing so well in the ratings because the talent, Rebecca, when you first got, when you first went to college, all the ladies went to, they went to UConn or they huddled up at, uh, at Tennessee. 
Now the talent is spread throughout. So we see Juju at USC. We see Paige at UConn. We see a Caitlin Clark. We see a Cameron Brink. We see a Angel Reese. So the talent is spread out, and it's like, okay, we are. it's not a foregone conclusion. Yeah. It's going to be Tennessee winning. Uh, it's going to be UConn winning. Now we really do not know. We think South Carolina, but – with those two, with those three young ladies, anything is possible. Yeah, Shannon, don't get it twisted. I mean, Stores is still the basketball capital. Why the well, the why women had you? five major injuries. I don't have time to get into all of it. So the talent's still there. We're just hurt. But yeah, it's it's spread out. It's sprinkled elsewhere. But yes, we still yes. dominate. In case, but in all case of a sudden, concerned. all of a sudden, you don't and have Maya Moore and Tina Charles and okay. Stewie and DT and Rebecca Lobo and Sue Bird. Mm -hmm. You don't have all of those loaded up at one a institution. Laundry list.